I'm going to show you how I came up with a fix or a solution to the common problem with the AB5200 bench, and that is a back that wobbles underneath you. Those of you that own this bench will note that there is some wobble from the bench back. The heavier my bench got, the more noticeable it became. There are two areas that require some modifications, one more important than the other. The main culprit is the width of the adjustable rails within the ladder system. The AB5200 uses a urethane cylinder over the rail system's bolt assembly to allow for easier gliding within the ladder. The problem is that this is too wide and this allows for shifting from side to side or wobbling under weight of a lifter and loaded barbell. The urethane bush is exactly 4 inches wide when the ladder rail it moves over is only 3 and 5 eighths inches wide. When the cylinder is flush on one side, it ends up being proud by 3 and 5 eighths inches on the other side. My first solution was to cut this down to the same 3 and 5 eighths inches so that it precisely matched the rail it sits on and then mounted washers on neither side of the moving rails from the seat back. These washers essentially fill the gap that was left on either side of the urethane cylinder and this eliminated the side to side play and wobble under weight. These are the two types of washers you need to do this hack. One is considered UAJ, the other one is UDJ. So one is three quarter inch diameter, the other one half inch. From Lowe's, these are the item codes 61702 and 68885. Of course, this creates a tight fit of the moving rail within the ladder system, but that is essential to eliminate the wobble. I suggest you also lubricate the ladder rails to allow for a smoother movement of the seat back and possibly saving your powder coating from being rubbed off by constant friction. I had to remove roughly 3 8 inches from the urethane cylinder and then mounted the larger 3 quarter inch washers on the one side of the cylinder rails and used the smaller half inch washer for the point where the screw threaded into the metal rail cylinder on the other side. Here I'm rocking the seat back from side to side in the upright position to demonstrate the lack of movement or play in the rail system's connecting points. But the other issue, uh, this, the lower mounting point that's in the middle of the spine, that comes with metal washers and those aren't flexible. They're required and they're such a tight fit that you can't even slide a thin washer in there to create more surface area up against the metal rails. I didn't really need to try and modify the seat rail because there is really not a lot of rocking of the seat and all of the distracting rocking occurred on the seat back. So no sense in trying to correct an issue that doesn't really exist. I looked at this point here, but there are washers in between each hinge section and that suffices for stability. So when you have a rail that's five inches wide sitting on a post that's just two inches, sure it'll hold it up, but it just creates an imbalance. There's a gap on either side where my finger is here and on the other side as well. As long as there's a lack of support on either side, there's going to be the potential for rocking from side to side. That's just a fact at this time. Is it a design flaw? Not necessarily. This is really just a problem for those of us that are very particular. When you're benching, you may not notice it that much at all. Now that I have the wide back, it became more noticeable to me, and that's just because there's now an extra inch of leverage on either side of the spine, but it's not really an issue. It just prevents it from being completely stable in the flat position because it is only being perched up by a two inch block of rubber. Now I was looking for rubber that I could use on top of a flat piece of metal to span the inner width of the seat back spine, mount it on the post and hope that it would create more stability from edge to edge and side to side. I won't be sure it'll work until I actually try it, but for now the washer fix that I did on the bottom rail system with the washers on both sides of the rails keeps it from moving from side to side. That created more surface area that keeps the rails in place and eliminates the railing from twisting on the weight and thus wobbling underneath you. So the second area that could benefit from some stability is the seat back perch when in the flat position. The problem is the perch is only two inches wide and the seat back spine on the other side is four and three quarter inches in width. So my second hack was to replace the rubber mount with a solid piece of three quarter inch maple with a two inch wide groove to slide on top of the perch and kickstand mount. This essentially holds up the seat back spine at its full inner width. I used the groove to help eliminate any rocking from side to side by having the overhang as stops. I secured it in place using the same screw previously used with the rubber stopper and this secured the wood perfectly.
The fit is a bit tight at first, but this will wear with use and slide into place quite nicely. You don't really want more play than that, or you'll introduce the same rocking you're trying to solve. This is how it looks nice and snug underneath the seat back. So between this and the washer fix, we now have a much more stable bench. Here's a shot of the bench from underneath, standing in its tripod stance. The block of maple wood with cut groove fills the seat back spine completely and stabilizes the bench back laterally. There is no more rocking of the bench's seat back now that the solid maple is there and the washers are in place on the adjustable rail system. So thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Take care.